Hey guys, welcome to today's episode. I am so excited. We have with us today David Strickle. He is a podcaster, a channeler, an author. He has channeled the program Trust Your Abundance, also called Taya, and I cannot wait to talk to him today to find out exactly how he got started doing this, and we're going to actually get a live example of the channeling today, so I'm super excited for this. Welcome to Awaken Your Inner Awesomeness. I am your host, Melissa Oatman from MelissaOatman.com. If you're new, I want to welcome you. If you're returning, welcome back. So thank you for being here today, David. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm really excited to hear about what you do because I think it's so unique and we don't get many guests who are on here who do channeling. So I'm very excited to dive in and first of all, learn all about who you are and how you started doing this. Sure. The, of course, moving into adulthood, uh, I came to realize that the, the stuff I've been getting my whole life, not everybody was getting or not everybody was paying attention to it the way that I was. Uh, I can now trace back and recall messages from what we now call the stream as early as age six, maybe even a little prior to that, uh, because I understood what I call the universal process of creation. A lot of people call it law of attraction, but I think that's a component of it, and I can get into that later. But I understood this process of creation, how we create our reality very early on. Uh, because I was raised by parents who didn't believe that they were abundant and didn't believe they had any control over their reality, especially my mother. And I knew otherwise, I just did. And the greatest gift that I got from my parents was that they really disconnected from my life around age six. Uh, my father left, uh, went and married somebody else, uh, had a family with her, and that kind of became his family. Uh, and then my mother fought for custody of my brother and I to get back at our dad and then turned and said, I never wanted either one of you <laughs> and didn't want to be a mother. And so yeah. I was kind of stuck, you know, being the, my older brother kind of handled that. Okay. Uh, I was six at the time. So I was really stuck. Uh, but that being stuck was a really good thing for me because I was really left to my own devices to figure out life. No one was teaching me how to do anything and nobody really cared how I did in school or what went on in my life. You know, there were glimpses of that for sure. I'm not pretending like I was just completely abandoned, but I, um, I, I really had to figure it out. And, and thankfully, I paid attention to this inner voice and it became very well developed. And then I moved into my teen years and I came to understand that, OK, I am a little different than everybody else. You know, I really didn't have a whole lot of friends. Uh, you know, I knew how to have acquaintances, but I didn't have a lot of close relationships with anyone. I had this really well-developed inner world and it carried me through. And I, I recall very vividly at age 14, describing what we call the law of attraction to my brother. And I didn't, hadn't read anything. I think there was only a couple of books about it. This was way back in 1982. Uh, and I remember describing it to him and I actually thought it was something that I had created. I know that sounds insane, but I thought I created this thing that if I think of things as if they are, my conditions change. And I don't see anybody else around me believing that. So I guess this is unique to me. <laughs> so I went with that in my teen years, even though I was living in a very poor household, I started manifesting the life of what you would call a, a wealthier teenager, brand new car, nice clothes, you know, all, all of the stuff that, uh, that teenagers want to have. And I moved into my adult life with that belief system and went through my 20s and my 30s really focusing on manifesting material things because as a poor kid that was my version of happiness i thought gosh if i have a big enough house and a nice enough car and pretty things then that's what happiness is and it took me until about 40 to understand that okay this stuff is nice but it's not everything <laughs> you know there's, there's more uh, so i was really listening to part of what was offered to me and not all of it and during that time i was also seeing psychics to try to figure out, you know, what's different about me. I know there's more than just this, uh, you know, 3D reality that we're in. I have connections. I'd had a lot of what you would call supernatural experiences. I'd seen, you know, interacted with uh, people who had crossed over and, and all of those sorts of things as a kid. All of that stuff is in my book, The Stream. Uh, but with all of those experiences, I just knew there was something else, but I knew it wasn't what my religion that I was raised in told me it was. That just seemed off to me from day one. In fact, I was actually removed from Sunday school in the fourth grade. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> so I had questions that no one could answer and it was just it was too much for them and maybe you just shouldn't come back so uh, I actually had a good really you know my religious upbringing was actually a good experience overall but that was an interesting one where you know I was a little too much for my Sunday school teacher so I got into my 40s 
And at that time, somebody had a psychic named Hazel Burley down in Casadega, Florida. Casadega is a very cool little place if you ever get a chance to go there uh, or if you've been there. Uh, and I saw a psychic there who told me that I was a channel. And she brought out this Abraham, uh, Abraham Hicks material and said, you do what they do and you need to pay attention to this. And I remember looking at it and judging it and thinking it was some sort of religious stuff. And I thanked her. She was a very nice lady. She said a lot of things to me that rang true, uh, but I didn't want any part of that Old Testament Abraham stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so I ignored it uh, until uh, around the time The Secret came out, that book, that really resonated with me uh, because, again, it's something It's like, OK, yes, other people understand this thing that I understand. Uh, and then that led me very miraculously into Back to Abraham, which ended up being a very good thing for me because the idea of being a channel when that when that psychic told me that I was a channel I didn't want any part of it that either I didn't want to be one of those weird people you know that's looking at a crystal ball and, and, and you know their head is spinning and all this stuff I was really judging it from my sort of fear-based you know Christian upbringing so Abraham Esther Hicks channeling of Abraham what that did for me is it made channeling seem very natural and normal and I felt that warmth of the Abraham message. And I really, really got into it for a while. And as I got into it, I started teaching it. And, and there were aspects that were coming to me from what I used to call my knowing that we now call the stream. And I came to really accept the fact that, okay, I understand that I'm getting this the same way she's getting this. And, you know, what does that look like? And I started offering it up in my personal life and in my professional life in a limited way uh, until I realized that, gosh, I've started putting this stuff into practice in my life and I started meditating in 2010 and right away I had what a lot of people would call a Kundalini awakening, uh, this energy eruption at the base of my spine. I'd never heard of it. I had no idea what was going on. It was very, very odd. Uh, and it just sort of electrified me and it, you know, it felt magnificent. It was like this pure feeling of pure joy and love just radiating through my entire being. And it was great. And I, I, of course, after that became really addicted to meditation where I was wanting to do it all the time. And of course, the more I meditated, the more I got from this. And that's when I came to understand that, okay, now I'm getting real clarity here because I'm really paying attention to this, this offering that all of this stuff doesn't matter if I'm not joyful and if I don't love myself and if I'm not at peace with all of humanity. And that was a big one because, you know, I'm 53 years old now and everything that's going on in our world right now that everybody thinks is so awful and terrible and seen to the world, I've lived enough life now to know that that's gone on in different versions. My whole existence, you know, the world's going to end, you know, the, the, this is the worst thing ever, politics is out of control. Uh, that's been going on since I can remember. Yeah. So I have enough experience to understand that the contrast of, of physical experience is part of the experience. And the stream really brought me to that awareness. And that's really what we talk about and what we teach. So I came full circle from really judging it to really embracing it. And in the decade of my 40s, I reinvented my whole life, every aspect of it. Uh, you know, everything that I wasn't, that wasn't working for me, I got in alignment. And I, it, it came to this, um, this sort of climax in 2017 when my last holdout was I was sticking myself in my very high paying corporate job that I had manifested with a 10th grade education, no less. And I was really sticking myself that I have to be in this job. I have to have that, that massive paycheck every other week. Uh, I've got to have that security. I've worked so hard to get here. I've got to stay here, but I'm miserable. I hate this job. I, you know, and I use the word hate at that point. I hate this job. I don't like the company. I don't like what we're doing. I don't like the way we treat people. I'm not in alignment with any of this anymore. And I'm really starting to teach this stuff. And I accepted that I was a channel. I really taught myself how to speak it. My path to doing it was a little different than Esther Hicks. If you're really familiar with that, hers was really miraculous. Mine was teaching myself how to do it because the knowing was always there. It was shifting into that gear and allowing it to flow so that I could speak it. And in totally giving myself over to that energy, and allowing it to flow through me where I'm not even really mentally present for it. And afterward, I have very little recollection of it. So it was just this miraculous journey that I created for myself or co-created, if you will, 
to sharing it. And, and I asked for a name at some point, and I was told very clearly there is no real name for source. It's all human, you know, human created stuff when we have to identify something and make it singular and measure it and do all of that sort of thing. That's all a 3D thing. Mm -hmm. And so I just said, the stream then, you're a stream of consciousness, I'm going to call you the stream. And that's how it became the stream of David. Wow, that's a really interesting journey to getting where you are. Um, and I find that channeling is, um, I do a little bit of it myself, but not to the extent that you're talking about. I just kind of here and there have messages that I give out to the collective. So I think that's really cool that you you do that and that you're trying to help people with that. So you said now that you would give us a little bit of an example of how you do this, but you have to meditate to get into the space. Is that correct? Yes. What I do is I just quiet my mind for a moment. I do a little bit of breath work. Uh, and it, it sort of drops in, if you will. And what I always do is I ask everyone who's experiencing this with me to meditate at the same time and set a positive intention for the experience to be exactly what you are seeking if you're seeking. And so you are co-creating the experience. You're asking is drawing it out. And anyone that's listening to this at any time in the future, you will find if you set that intention, you're asking will draw out a message for you, regardless of when you're listening to it, because there's so many layers to what they offer in so few words. That's really cool. So can we try it? Let's do it. <laughs> All right. We are here. Thank you for being here. We understand that you might have some questions for us. Yes, so do you have any messages that you would like to give to anyone listening out there to our podcast today? The, the, the message that that we generally start with when, when someone is just meeting us for the first time, if that is the case, is to explain that if you are not already aware of the fact that what David is sharing with you right now already exists within you in all creation. And while you have very often been taught to, to hold separate identities, for the, these, these messages that you receive and the communication that you very well believe is beyond you, understanding that it is all what you may call source, the consciousness of all that is, the eternal consciousness that is original thought, that is the universe, that is the creator of all physical reality that is infinite. And understand that you may believe that you are separate from it or that you are not worthy of it or that you are too small for it. However, that is not the case at all. You see, we see all of you as the eternal beings that you are as part of that which we are, but you are expressing yourselves as independent strands of consciousness in this physical reality. And in that expression of, of, of independence, you are having your contrasting human experience, meaning you are, are in a polarized environment and you are all moving through this physical reality in what we refer to as vibrational flow. And in this vibrational flow, your vibration, and you, and you are very aware of your vibration because it's expressed in your emotions, your mood, is on this constant journey up and down the spiral. And in this up and down journey, you are creating your reality. You are, you are attracting a mix of things that you appreciate, things that you desire, and things that you do not. And certainly some are attracting more of their desires than others, and others are attracting a far more 
a journey of suffering, if you will. And then we trip up on that word because we do not see it as suffering. Humanity identifies suffering because humanity has been programmed by humanity to identify any suffering as negative and unwanted. However, our message for humanity is that your point of view, your perspective of human suffering and your own suffering can be reshaped, can be feared far less, can even be appreciated ultimately in your journey of self-discovery and understanding that you can move yourselves through suffering, regardless of where you are vibrationally, and you are all quite obviously on independent journeys, you can move toward appreciation of all things that you have manifested in your journey. And in your appreciating them and wrapping your arms around them, if you will, and claiming ownership of them, then you gain the power to reframe these things, to move to authentic appreciation and detune the power that they have over you because that is where the suffering is actually created. So you can reframe your entire human experience, the, everything that you have experienced, regardless of what it is, regardless of how much you experience suffering in the moment, regardless of, of how far it took you down your spiral, of, of, of how bad it made you feel in the moment and perhaps makes you feel moving forward. And the reason that we guide you to this is because everything that's going on in your life experience that you perceive as your now is based on your belief system, which was created by your reaction to that journey. From the time you were conceived until your perception of now, you reacted to the things that you manifested. And your manifestations are very rarely intentional, especially early on. You become more intentional as you move through your experience. But a lot of that intention is rooted in fear as much as it's rooted in joy. So think about the fact that you are all attracting everything that's happening in your life experience like a magnet. And, and when you hear that, it's very easy for you to default to, you would have never attracted X, Y, Z because it was so painful. But the point of attraction is not about just what you desire. The point of attraction is about your vibrational flow and your reaction to your life experience. So when you come to terms with the fact that you're attracting all of it, including the things that you didn't want, including the things that were traumatic, perhaps in your childhood, then you claim the power to transmute that negative energy to something positive for you. This is your original operating system. Humanity has created and developed an operating system that leaders over time have learned to harness the power of fear for control. But you are moving out of that era now, and you are all becoming more and more aware that you're creating your reality. But you get really tripped up sometimes on the idea of creating things unwanted. But once you accept that, that is a first giant step into being more deliberate in your creation in your now and moving forward. And you learn to clean up all of that stuff in your past. And we do guide you to go all the way back in as far as you can go into your past and begin to reframe and reshape and appreciate. Find that joyful path of appreciation for everything that you've encountered for the gifts that it has given you. Because all of it served to make you a more sophisticated being. The, the, the earth experience, the human experience specifically, is intended to make you a more sophisticated being, a more sophisticated strand of consciousness, because your increasing sophistication contributes to the increasing consciousness that you call source. And that is your purpose on planet Earth. That is your purpose as a human being. But all of this idea that, that, that suffering is negative and that the world is evil and damaged and broken and, and that, that you are being treated unfairly and all of these things are actually mechanisms of control that moved humanity through an experience. There are no negative experiences from our perspective, but you are awakening from that now. You do not need those, those elements of control anymore. You are coming to understand that all of these human constructs of religion and government and all of these things exist to control. And you are all breaking free because you are freedom-seeking beings at your core. 
but that journey can be very bumpy until you start to claim ownership of all of it, transmute all of your negative to positive through radical appreciation, and then claim the power to fear less and create more in your favor and learn how to raise your default vibration in that process, allowing more of our energy to flow to you, allowing more joy, allowing more clarity, and ultimately allowing more of whatever you consider abundance. I love that. So if there's anyone out there listening who perhaps has had difficulty in finances or perhaps in love or those areas where, you know, they're really seeking to improve, what advice or what, what can you offer to them? Notice that you all have certain areas where you manifest with ease. And, and sometimes it's not easy to focus on that because the areas where you do not manifest with ease are, are clamoring for your attention constantly. And understand that since you are moving through this vibrational flow, your vibration is not going to be in that joyful, happy space all the time. Because not one of you came here for that perfection. Not one of you came here to operate a life of perfection, although many of you dream of that, of having all of it the perfect body and the perfect health and the perfect mate and the, and, and the perfect bank account and the freedom to travel and do all the things that you want to do. Those are your desires. But understand that if you are all just manifesting desires and there was no negative, there was no what you may call contrast in any of that, there would be no new creation. There would be no new expansion offered because you would automatically drop into an, an existence of quiet perfection and the, the appreciation factor would not even be present because you, you do not periodically hold yourselves away from it. So with that said, the, the idea of this, this law of attraction, and this is a term that humanity has created, we refer to it as a universal process of creation because law of attraction is a component of it. Polarity, however, is another major component of it. So when you're thinking that you need more money or you need a satisfying romantic relationship or you need to have a child or anything else to be happy, what are you doing? You're thinking about it a lot because your belief system is stating that that thing that you do not have is exactly what you need to experience joy. And since you're operating in this vibrational flow, when you are up your spiral, as we say, when you are completely source connected in a state of joy, it's far easier for you to dream big and believe these things. And when you're doing that, you are absolutely attracting these things to yourselves. Where you get tripped up, however, is the universe is a set it and forget it environment, if you will. When you set an intention towards something, you do not need to keep going back to it and thinking about it again and again and again. But if you think you need this thing to be happy, inevitably you will. More money is needed. More money is needed. Another bill comes in. The paycheck is not what you thought it was going to be. More money is needed. Well, you're thinking those thoughts through your vibrational flow. So inevitably, you're going to revisit those thoughts as you go down your spiral. And notice how your belief changes depending on where you are in your vibrational flow. It's easy to believe up here, a little more difficult there. Doubt kicks in here. Fear kicks in and then disbelief and then anger and frustration and all of those things. And you're constantly broadcasting to the universe. And the universe is not judging. We are not a judgmental entity whatsoever of anything. So you are always receiving exactly what you are sending out, an exact match. That is why you have this flow of things. Some is positive and some is negative. And then sometimes you're beginning to manifest something that you really want because you've whipped up your belief around it. And then it all unravels and spins out. That you have evidence all around you of the law of attraction, of the universal process of creation. So where we guide you with all of this is to take everything that we are offering, and we are offering you a lot. So we guide you to listen to this a few times and, and really understand this vibrational flow and understand that you are constantly broadcasting. And the universe is constantly saying yes to everything that you're broadcasting, which is why you get a mix and why very often there are things that you have a belief system around that keep recurring, that are rooted in what we refer to as transgressor energy way back in your early childhood. If you were raised in poverty consciousness until you break that cycle of thought, you are going to hold yourselves in poverty consciousness. 
when you were fearing something costing money, when you were demonizing your system of currency that, that humanity has created. We, we, we like to teach based on a, a pyramid. The, the spiral is your unique vibrational spiral, but the pyramid comprises all of humanity in this case. And all of humanity comprises this wealth pyramid in this example. And when you are demonizing your system of commerce, when you're believing that everything should just be free to you, when you are saying that the people that have the money are evil, are corrupt or wrong, you are placing yourselves at the base of the pyramid. And when you're at the base of the pyramid, you are holding the weight of it. Yet the ones who are at the top of the pyramid, the ones who have the flow of wealth that you seek, or whatever you seek, it works on all topics, are not demonizing it, are not criticizing it. They are loving it. And they are in deep appreciation of all beings that comprise the pyramid. This is why you may view them as evil if they're at the top and they are earning billions of dollars while they're paying their employees minimum wage. Because they understand the wealth pyramid. They understand the ones that are at the base, creating the base in the minimum wage scenario or even less, are placing themselves there. And they're at peace with it. So when you are judging the experience of humanity as evil or wrong or should not be, you are lowering your position on the pyramid. The universe works in opposition of how humanity tends to operate. Notice that. You have to believe it to receive it. And very often, human beings think they have to receive it to actually believe it. But your universe does not work that way. Your planet does not work that way. Your commerce does not work that way. Your romantic life does not work that way. And you see evidence of it. But very often you still grapple with it because there's so many teachings around be in the 3D, be in reality. Do not get into this hocus pocus stuff. Just focus on what's real. And what's real is you get an education and you get a job and you work hard and you save your money and you scrape together what you can and you try to find some happiness and all of that. But not all beings are, are, are having that experience. Many beings are, are, are having less than that, and many beings are having more than that. And you look at that and say that, that life is not fair. The universe is not about fairness. And the sooner you stop expecting the universe to be benevolent and fair and understand that what is being delivered is an experience, and in your completed state of consciousness, your eternal state, you are not judging any of the human experience. The suffering is an experience. The, the not having enough money is an experience. The not being in a romantic relationship that is satisfying is an experience. So when you take that eternal consciousness level of thought and pull it into your 3D reality and you stop judging and you start embracing the system that you're in and loving it and notice how it starts working in your favor. And this includes that judgment that you all place outward and you all do it. It's, an, it's, it's part of your, your, your ego system where you are natural discerners of preference. So the judgment can be detuned, but it's not going to be completely eradicated because you are here to decide what you want and what you do not and manifest the things that you want and manifest some of the things that you do not. And in the, the powerful experience in humanity is when you learn to manifest less and less and less of the things that you do not want and more and more and more of the things that you do. But that's only arrived at through appreciation of the entire system. So if someone is finding themselves stuck in that same pattern of thinking to where they are constantly manifesting the negative because they can't get out of that poverty mindset, they can't get out of the fear-based thinking, how might they be able to quickly, or at least in a way that's going to stop it at a faster rate, turn that around for themselves? Understand that we flow to, to all beings and we are not judgmental. So when you are looking at anything without judgment and finding a path to appreciation, even if you're so trained to judge, and, and many of you are, that the first, the first glimpse of something, the automatic reaction is to judge it. But understand that, that that's okay. You can take that judgment and then reframe it and, and do what we call detuning it. 
softening up the judgment, seeing through the eyes of source, because you have that in you. And when you look at something in joy and appreciation, as opposed to judgment of this should not be, or they should not be that way, you automatically feel better. You, you feel your source connection activate because it's always there. The judgment is the very thing that holds you away from that connection. Because when you are judging something as that should not be, that lowers your vibration, disconnects you from your natural source connection. It's always there, but your ego is overshadowing it a bit. So when you develop the skill, and you all can do this, and it takes time, and it gets better the more you do it. If you start viewing something, and you judge it as that should not be, and you stop yourself, and you zoom out to a higher perspective of non-judgment, and look at it again in appreciation, you will feel that different vibration within you. And this can become a way of life. Detuning judgment, detuning judgment, detuning judgment. Stop the judgment of the experience of others because that very often takes you down and then inevitably that judgment turns inward to you aren't worthy. You should not be the way that you are. And understand that your projection in, into your human experience was intended to be a contrasting experience all along. David did a podcast years ago called Your Parents Are, Were Supposed to Screw You Up. And that's one of his most popular podcast episodes in over 180 some odd episodes that he has. Your parents were supposed to screw you up. They were supposed to deliver some positive things and they were supposed to deliver some negative things. And that is by design because you're all born up to speed with the time that you project into. So therefore, you being born into your time and the vibration of earth that you project into, you are going to have a natural disconnection from your parents who were born and projected in at their time. So that delivers contrast to you automatically. Think of how you cannot operate your lives just like your parents did. And now think about your grandparents and how you absolutely cannot operate your lives the way they did. You're evolving, you're expanding, your consciousness is becoming more sophisticated as a collective and certainly as an independent strand of consciousness being up to speed with when you project in. So you are, are taught these limiting beliefs in one way or another automatically in different ways. And these limiting beliefs take root and they branch out in your lives and you are creating your lives of contrast. But these limiting beliefs can absolutely be detuned through appreciation of them. So instead of saying that you have poverty consciousness because you were born into poverty and your parents had poverty consciousness, reframing it to you appreciate the fact that you had the challenge of being born into poverty consciousness and that you are now creating your path out of it because you appreciate that opportunity to create new, which is your entire purpose for coming to humanity in the first place. So that new creation appreciation reframes that blame and that judgment of the consciousness that you were born into. And you start doing that systematically. And then you can start picking apart your life. And instead of thinking it as, as this linear, this linear experience of a collection of things, some are positive and some are negative, we guide you to break all of that up into these bubbles of experiences that are all floating up. They are all the same. Some of them were painful. Some of them taught you great lessons. Some of them taught you painful lessons. Some of them were loving. Some of them were caring. And understand that that entire collection of experiences is making you a more sophisticated strand of consciousness in your human experience and certainly in your eternal experience. That's the purpose. So the purpose is not just to come and have everything that you want. So when you gain understanding of this and learn this detuning process, to zoom out and detune the judgment of all of it, seeing all of humanity as eternal strands of consciousness here having a very temporary human experience and the suffering that, that you are judging of others, if that's drawing your vibration down, you are not offering a solution to yourselves or to the other that you claim is suffering. It's appreciation of the experience. That is the key to detuning all suffering. The pushing against, the, the judging, the demonizing. Notice that the things that you push against and you judge as unwanted and demonize 
gain momentum, gain power, and stick around, and simply reframe from, from decade to decade to decade in different ways. You, you have a very long history to, to, to review of all of this now. So think of a very radical solution to that. And the radical solution is radical appreciation of all of it, being more aligned with the source consciousness that is not judgmental, that is appreciative deeply of every experience, even if that experience is what you consider an early demise of a being. But if that early demised human being is eternal, was it really a demise in the first place? Or is it simply a shorter than preferred human journey from a human perspective? So this is heady stuff. This is very advanced stuff, but the ones that are listening to you are ready for this because there is frustration in so many teachings that tell you just to be happy all the time and get everything that you want because that's not why you're here in the first place. You are not here for perfection. You are here for the experience, all of it. And when you start embracing the imperfections and when you start meeting the obstacles in joy, you are, you are manifesting a more joyful life experience in that process of detuning the judgment. And then you will notice when you're not fearing the next shoe dropping, when you're not fearing that next negative thing or that next obstacle anymore, then you are seeing less of them and your default vibration is going up and you are in a state of source connected joy more of the time, regardless of your, your income, your bank account, your body, your health, your relationship status, how you get along with your parents. None of that matters anymore because you have found a path to being joyful in your now. And then when you are more joyful in your now, you have the clarity of source flowing to you. Deep appreciation of all that is, including that which you are. And in that higher vibrational state, your version of abundance isn't needed as much anymore. You move out of that vibration of need. So you're not telling the universe that you need this to be happy. And the universe is no longer agreeing with you that you indeed need it, which keeps you in that perpetual cycle of not manifesting what you want. So the key is, and we, we have taken quite a bit of time to get around to this, but it took that to get here. The key is to get out of the vibration of need and find joy and appreciation in what is, understanding that that is not going to stick you there. You're expansive beings by nature. And all of that set it and forget it desire that you have, if you are truly trusting the universe to deliver it and not needing it to show up, finding joy in what is, then it starts to show up. That makes total sense. And I've definitely seen that in my own life where the more I focus just on what I have currently and I'm happy for and the experiences that I'm having right now, everything just sort of falls into place for me. Indeed, that the, there is a common fear that you're settling and you're going to start sending the universe the, the, the message that you want more of exactly what you have. But notice that 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 energy, your energetic beings at your core and this this expanding expansion of consciousness this more sophisticated consciousness that we refer to which is exactly what we are that is expansive by nature therefore you're not going to stay stuck in a situation through appreciating what is you are naturally going to be so appreciative of what is that you are abundant you are sending out the vibration of abundance and that vibration of abundance is going to start calling in the things that you want with ease because you're not sending that staticky signal of you need this to be happy. And therefore, you're keeping yourselves in that perpetuated state of need. Yeah. It's almost like as if, if you were trying to attract a person, that needy energy actually pushes the person away. So in the same way, that energetic neediness of needing the money, needing the per partner, needing the job, this, the, that actually does the opposite and like having magnets that are on the wrong ends facing that it pushes it away instead of attracting it fully. Indeed. The, the, the vibration of need and the frustration with the system pushes you down the pyramid. And I see in my own life where I still do this still do this very much myself in that I, I judge myself and other situations too often and 
allow the worry and the the almost like anxiety it almost comes up in anxiety and that I have to make sure that my kids are taken care of I have to make sure the bills get paid I have to do this I have to do this and I'm using that word have to instead of allowing like I get to do all of these things and I have everything I need and I'm enjoying the life that I have. And it's a simple shift in how do we look at that? The, that the trust sense. is the key. You, you, yeah. you have illustrated very brilliantly how trust is the key because if you're trusting the universe, you don't have to do anything. It, it just is. And you are trusting that whatever comes next is, is for your highest good. And, and most of you have already come to understand that there are things that manifested or didn't manifest that you desired that seemed like a problem at the time that unfolded to be a, a great gift for you. Understand that everything that you encounter is that. It just depends on your perspective of it. You can find the gift in everything that you have created for yourselves. And the more you start trusting the universal process of creation, meaning trusting throughout your vibrational flow, appreciating that you're going to be down your spiral in lower vibrations some of the time. And when you're down there, things aren't going to work as well for you as they do when you're up. And the sooner you find appreciation for that down, the sooner you're going to find yourself up where all the solutions are anyway. So the universal process of creation really is the lower vibration serving as inspiration. And the quicker you appreciate you will move up to new creation, which is the solving of whatever problem you have manifested, whatever obstacle has popped up. So think of it in terms of, of inspiration, appreciation, and creation. And that circles right back, and that is your infinity symbol. Those things, those steps, that is the universal process of creation. So therefore, there is really no negative. We speak of down the spiral and low vibration because we are communicating in a way that that you, you, you understand what we're saying, but at the core of all of this, there is no negative. There is absolutely no negative. There is inspiration. Think of all the things that humanity has created that were created as a solution to a perceived problem. Everything, everything, the entire universe is created that way. Inspiration, that lower vibrational field of unwanted experiences serve as inspiration. And as soon as you learn to appreciate your inspiration, that appreciation takes you right back up to source connectivity. And that source connected state, you are creating new. Inspiration, appreciation, and then creation. I Infinitely. love that. I love that. And that's so very true. It's very true. And if you can use in your own life any thing that you might consider to be negative, you might consider it to be conflict, use it instead to help you find where you want to be in life and appreciate the journey of getting there. Indeed. Well, I love that. We, we have shared a lot of information. And, and, and as we stated earlier, we very much guide anyone who resonates with this material to go back into this episode and listen to this a few times, because there was a lot offered. And, and, and not a lot of time in very few words, but it manifests in perfection because those who are listening are ready for this. Even if it creates a little confusion in the beginning, it is our promise to you that if you listen a few times and get into the practice and get into the teaching that is offered, it will begin to fall into place for you. And it just takes patience and understanding that your life experience is a journey. This isn't about crossing some finish line of perfection and you're all fixed and you're all done and you're manifesting every single thing that you want, but getting better and better and better at allowing your natural state of joyful source connection to be realized is the most magnificent experience any human being can manifest. With much love, that is what we have. Thank you so much. <laughs> wow, you you extracted a masterclass from this. <laughs> <laughs> I was somewhat aware, just thinking, oh my gosh, this is a whole lot pouring out this, this episode. <laughs> it was. That was awesome. They had a You're a seeker, <laughs> aren't you? You're a real yeah. seeker of, of, of clarity. Wow. Yes. That usually takes like two hours to cover all that, just so you know. <laughs> yes, there was a lot of wisdom drawn. And um, 
they even said we need to listen a few times just to get everything that was given in that short amount of time. So really appreciate you channeling that for us. So it's, it's always fun to do it. And I'm always emotional when I get through doing it because it's just such a heightened uh, experience, you know, that is, um, it's indescribable. But I think everybody is capable of getting into that space, whether they are going to be you know, speaking it or not, that clarity is available to everybody. And just from my side of it too, as we were doing the meditation before just sitting in stillness, I got chills everywhere and felt I could feel the energy entering the space as well. Like when you started channeling, I could I could see in you a change in your face and even the lighting from where you were changed. And I got chills because I could feel their energetic presence coming in as well. Um, and a lot of people, if you don't understand energy, you don't understand energy work. You know, I am a, I practice Reiki. I'm an intuitive also. And I, you can feel every little bit of vibrational change that happens when someone's channeling or, or when you're like, if you're getting a reading with someone. So it's, I'm trying to describe it for the listeners at home because they're not seeing anything, but as you're sitting there, you can feel that shift that comes in. It was such an, an enlightening, lovely experience. So thank you so much for being the channel for that. Well, thank you for allowing me to come on and meet your audience and, and, and do it for all of you because I love doing it. It's a lot of fun <laughs> and I love sharing it. And, and I, I am a student of their teachings, just like everybody else that, that follows uh, the stream. And, um, you know, it's, we're always just putting into play, putting it into play. That's what Taya is. It's taking that, the, all of that that they just gave and applying it practically in your life. It's very practical for something that is so spiritual and otherworldly. It's taking all that and saying, okay, that's all great, but how do we actually do that in our 3D lives of imperfection and challenges and bills coming in and, you know, social media and news everywhere. And that's the fun part. It's gotten fun. In the beginning, it's a little frustrating, but then it gets to be a whole lot of fun to start seeing how magical we all are in applying this stuff. And that's what Taya is. I love that. And so how do you work with people um, to help them apply the Taya method? Uh, we have a Facebook group called the Taya Practice. So if you're on Facebook, you can join the Taya Practice and you can Google the Taya Practice. It's, there's lots of stuff out there. But uh, the Facebook group is a very good learning environment because it's absolutely free to join. We have guides in there that are graduates of my boot camp program that guide you to teachings in the group. So the Taya Practice is for all of humanity. So you can join the Facebook group. You can listen to the Stream of David podcast. And there's a lot of things offered in there. We also, if you're really interested... We have a masterclass that's free as well. And you go to the stream of David masterclass.com. And I'm sure we sent you that uh, link to go there. Uh, but that gets you into this, this uh, it's, it's, we call it a learning funnel. <laughs> you get you into this, you really are learning stuff in there. Uh, we have a bootcamp program, but I, I tell everybody, get into the Facebook group and start learning this stuff and absorbing it if it resonates with you and start figuring it out. And that is, that is for people that are really ready to, okay, I love these teachings. I love this stuff. I'm really re, you know, re, ready to radically change my life. That's for that. That's for that time. But for now, you can get into the Facebook group and start learning it right away. And there's a wealth of the Stream of David stuff out there. I love that. And we're going to have all of those links for you in the show notes. So you can click and go directly there. Um, this has been such a fun episode and, and so much enlightening information, um, but I always like to leave our listeners with one little nugget of wisdom that can help take them through their day. So I ask you if you have any parting words of wisdom for our listeners out there today. I would say that the, the quickest path to finding joy wherever you are at any place is to be able to reframe through appreciation. And I have a little tool that I love. When I start to feel myself be triggered, I don't get triggered much because I've done so much detuning work, but I do still, we all do. When I feel myself sort of being triggered down the spiral, down in a lower vibration, I have a stop gap and I stop and ask myself, is this worth going down my spiral over? And you can develop that. 
and it's something that costs you nothing to do, you can start doing it. And if something starts to frustrate you, realize that you're in that vibration in the moment and things seem hopeless and awful and terrible, but it's just because you're in that vibration. So when you stop it and shift it to appreciation, then you start to work your way up. And it's a, it's a way to change a commute. It's a way to change a bad day at work. It's a way to change an argument with your spouse. It's a way to change frustration with your children. And you can do it. And the more you do it, the better you get at it. I love that. Such good advice and definitely something that you can use throughout your day. And anytime you feel yourself going down that path of the the, I call it going down the rabbit hole of negative thinking, an easy way to shift out of it. Thank you for that piece of wisdom. And thank you again so much for being here with us today. Thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. Yes. And I want to thank all of you for being here with us today as well. If you like this podcast, please subscribe. Please leave a positive review from wherever you're listening. And also don't forget that you can follow me on social media. I go live Mondays on Facebook at 630 Central, where I do a free card reading. If you show up for the live, I'll pull a card especially for you. And also, I now have Patreon, so if you would like extra episodes that are not available to the general public, you can join my Patreon. You can go and check that out. The link will also be in the description of the show notes. I'm hoping that you guys have a beautiful day from wherever you're listening. As always, I am sending you so much love and light, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye, guys.